Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the podcast where a real statistics professor and his cousin Jared and his friend Jay gives you sports betting tips. I'm Professor Sides. You can follow me on Twitter at Professor Sides. You can follow my cousin Jared on Twitter at Cousin Jared. And you can follow my friend Jake on Twitter at my friend underscore Jake. Today is Friday, March 18th, 2022. This episode covers all of Saturday's second round NCAA tournament games. You can find Friday games covering the episode. In the upper corner of the screen, it's it's kind of that direction over Jared's head, right? So that's where you can find it. Yeah, you go. You can find the Friday games. That's what you have to hit that up and come back here. The link is also in the description. In case you're new here, I built a mathematical model that predicts the spread and total should be for every Division One college basketball game. And as I go through the plays, remember the A picks are the ones I love, B picks are the ones I like, and C picks are the leans. However, please remember that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as I'd like to say the model will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality. For any gambler, uh, we had some fun games yesterday in the opening day, a couple of upsets. And so I figured we would take three minutes, maybe five minutes, just a real quick time and go through each game. And I'm going to give everyone a chance to say one word or sentence about the game. Uh, this might get lighthearted. It might get serious. Uh, just, just to recap what's happening. So we're going to start off with that first game. Jake, I'm going to toss it to you. Michigan and Colorado State. Give me one sentence or phrase. Ooh, why did Colorado State forget that Roddy was on the floor for like five minutes and not give him the ball? I feel like that's the Michigan team that we expected to see most of the season. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that was a tale of two halves. Michigan didn't hit a three in the first half yeah. and then got on fire in the second half. So that was a that was an interesting one. Uh, South Dakota State Providence. Ooh, uh, Providence came to play. South Dakota State gave it everything they had, but Providence was. Really good. I expected way more points. Yes. I'm actually going to pass on this one because I'm going to talk about this game later in today's episode because I think that's a very interesting point there. Um, Memphis, Boise State. That that was just a weird game. What Boise scores 19 in the first and then Memphis takes off, uh, takes off and then Boise almost brings it back or something crazy like that. It was fun to watch. Wild. Yep, Jared. That is as many points as I expected in a game featuring somebody from the Mountain West. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I don't know if I talk about it here or later, but the, the Mountain West just, you know, can't play yeah. basketball in March, apparently, unfortunately. Uh, Norfolk State Baylor. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was going to have that one with <laughs> Norfolk State, honestly. So that, yeah, that's on me. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, who knew that their best player wasn't going to play the first half? I that maybe yeah. affected that game. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. Um, yeah. Who, who really knows if one guy would have turned that around or not? If, if not, Baylor whew, looked pretty good. Uh, Longwood, Tennessee. There's my boys. There we <laughs> go. So my my response is. Yeah. Uh, I, Longwood. <laughs> I was reminded that Longwood plays in Farmville, Virginia. So there you go. Uh, Richmond, Iowa. Mm. Uh, well, live by the three, die by the three, right? Yeah, that one, that that's, I expected an exciting game and it exceeded my expectations. Did, I expected, did it, so. Uh, did anybody else, like, when they were watching it, feel like Keegan Murray didn't want the ball? I, I wasn't watching it close but, enough yeah. to see that specific detail. Um, so I, I don't think I can talk on that. Um, I expected more points. I expected more from Iowa's offense. Um, they seem to struggle in March. Uh, it's, it's surprising that their offense just disappeared like that. Uh, George Dick Gonzaga. Well, hmm. Very confusing game. Georgia State's in it until they weren't flip the switch that's the phrase that i think of when i think of that game i'm gonna say i was actually watching that one a little closer and that gonzaga didn't get it going until georgia state lost all their big guys due to injury and foul trouble so i'm a little nervous about gonzaga based off of that uh marquette north carolina North carolina came to play hit well you can see what they can do when they hit threes it's just incredible where the defense go marquette that's <laughs> that's that's something. 
Yeah, 95 points. Uh, yeah. That's all I can say is, yeah. yeah. I, I expect Iowa maybe to give up 95 points, uh, yeah. not not Marquette. Uh, New Mexico State, UConn. I, I never thought UConn would struggle that hard on offense. Uh, may, maybe I misunder or misestimated New Mexico State's defense, but man, it looked like they they couldn't find anything. I also expected more points in this game. Five <laughs> twelves. Uh, yeah, you know, every yeah. year. Uh, Saint Saint Peter's, Kentucky. No one has anything to say about this game, right? <laughs> hey, I'm just gonna say I was right. Saint Peter's was gonna win. I was all over it. <laughs> <laughs> no, num- number one, I love it. Number two, Kentucky, man, if you hit a couple of free throws there in overtime, complexion of this game changes a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm speechless on that one. Uh, you, you don't see it. You don't see a two fifteen every year, so I'm just I'm speechless on that one. Yeah. Uh, Indiana St. Mary's. Let's let's blame this on IU's travel travel trouble. Let's do that. Let's do Not that. unfair. Oof. Not unfair. Shock. Shock. I, I, this is this is Jared. This is where you can talk about the cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. 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 So man, it, it this, only highlight. Yeah. This was the the college football pod. We do a good, bad, best. The cheerleader getting the the ball that was stuck on the backboard uh, down. That would have been my best of the entire day for sure. So if you haven't seen that, go to Twitter. You can probably type in like you know IU cheerleader gets basketball or something like that. Yeah. And it, man, it is the coolest thing you've ever seen. Go go check that video out. And she gets interviewed by Andy Katz during the, during right. the game because it was such a smoother. My, I, my favorite my favorite part of that is they bring out the chair. Yep. And there's that really tall dude for St. Mary's, and then oh, the there. tiny little referee gets on the chair. And is not any taller than the tall dude. It was like that wasn't gonna help you. Like he's already got like a foot and a half on you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that was great. Uh, Creighton, San Diego State. Man, San Diego State. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. I took the words right out of my mouth. I was gonna say heartbreaking. I think all of us here were pretty sold on San Diego State. So took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, and they they looked just like we thought they would in the first half, and then just completely fell apart. Yeah. Uh Vermont, Arkansas. That was a game. That was a game. You know, I don't mean to go on a rant here, but or the refs made that game almost unwatchable. It, they couldn't go two lengths of the floor without some kind of touch foul and nobody got any rhythm. I think that kind of hurt Vermont, but man. Ooh. Anybody who's listening to this that has, has checked out our brackets in the tournament challenge. We'll see that I had Vermont going to the Sweet 16. So I a uh, little little heartbroken here as well. Uh, I, Vermont was a really good team. I, I y'all talked about it on the podcast earlier this week, but I hate that Vermont and Arkansas got got matched up together. Um, I think you know almost any other four or you know Vermont if they were like a 12 or something, I think they would have had a great chance to move on. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree. And I'm gonna say uh, praise the Lord that the last second three that Vermont took had a long rebound to a guy who was standing near. Nobody who could launch it up court and the game lands at four because yes. I'm sitting there like thinking they're going to foul and Arkansas is going to win by six. And so I'm just glad that that rebound helped us out there yeah. uh, for, for our cover. Um, Akron, UCLA. Hey, good job, Akron. That was – but and also bad job, Akron. Yeah. Like, great to be there. Got to finish. Yeah, UCLA. <laughs> yeah. Good, good UCLA, good. Bad UCLA, yeah bad uh yeah. and i'm also gonna add one more thing on this one because it's my podcast uh if anybody saw that game the last possession akron's down two uh shot clocks off they have to shoot a three they cannot try for a two they do not want to go to overtime and play five more minutes they got to take their shot Dude. right then and there guy drives to the hole has a guy wide open for three if he passes him on the baseline the lane was open and instead he tries to I guess get fouled. I don't know what he was trying to do. There was no way he was going to make that shot. They were all over him. I don't know how good of a three-point shooter that is. I don't care. If he's 20%, fine. I let him take that shot. Give me a 20% chance to win on because he was not – if you had an easy layup, don't pass it up, sure, but that was not easy. And that, to me, they had to shoot a three, and they screwed up that last possession. Um, good effort for Akron, of course. A great job paying in there, but that last possession hurt. Uh, San Francisco, Murray State. You know, that was a wild game. Uh, I thought Murray State kept acting like they were going to pull away, and then we just – Boye just pulled the San Francisco up by the bootstraps. That was insane. That three he hit from nearly half court was just nuts. 
I'm I'm glad that Murray State won because I feel like that was you know one of the biggest edges that the model had um, you know on that that first day of games and I, I personally was my favorite bet of the day so glad that they hung in there and won because yeah San Francisco did not they refused to go away yeah that was a roller coaster game San Francisco's up and Murray State's up and San Francisco comes back I mean it was just a roller coaster game yep. uh, and the last one Texas Southern and Kansas good season Texas good season Texas Southern. We'll, we'll get them next year, Texas Southern. <laughs> I, my, I'm going to say the exact same thing will happen next year. They'll be ready for the conference tournament. They will win the SWAC, and they will get they will win the play-in game, and then they will get beat by 30. Uh, so y'all remind me next year uh, just okay. to, <laughs> that they're going to win their first game, just bet on them in the, in the first four, and then they're going to lose by 30. So y'all, just, y'all remind me next year because uh, I feel yeah. like we see this every year. Every year we think they got a chance. And the, the dogs, double-digit dogs yesterday went four and three. Like I said, I think that's the default way you want to look at them. But remind me next year that while that statement is true, it is not true with Texas Southern. That they just okay. they they play well in that first four, but then they're outmatched when they play a one seed. Um, and that's going to take us to today's games. Or sorry, Saturday's games. Uh, we're going to kick it off with the early game in North Carolina at Baylor. It's an eleven ten. AM Central start. Baylor is a six point favorite and a total of one hundred and forty nine. I would not want to play against this North Carolina team with how well they've played lately. Uh, I'm not sure fading Baylor is that smart either, though. These first round games do have predictive value. So I want to make sure that that's if, if you hear one thing that you're trying to learn and educate yourself about this term. The first round games do have predictive value. If you say a, a team squeaks one out, you know, and you, you, you write it off or if a team takes care of business and wins by 30. You can't just ignore that. That's not to say that a team that wins by 30 is going to be national champions. And it's not to say that every time someone squeaks one out that they lose the next round. It's just saying that that does give you some information that teams that do well in the first round, take care of business are more likely to do better going forward. And teams that struggle aren't Baylor looked great. And I cannot be the only one who's having flashbacks of last year where they just did not care about the conference tournament. Last year, they lost to a five seed. They should have lost to a seven seed, but then got to the tournament and just got it rolling, knowing that they needed to turn it on then. So I don't like either side personally. The numbers indicate an under, and so I'm going to go under 149. The model thinks 147 and a half, but it's only a C pick for me. There's a lot of variability in both these teams, as we saw with North Carolina putting up 95. And I don't think they'll put up 95 against Baylor, of course. But there's both these teams can just have some variability, get up and down, and then both these teams can kind of kind of slow it down more than you think. So the numbers indicate under, but it's only a C pick, only a lean for me, just because I don't really trust either one of them. Jake, what do you have? Uh, I lean North Carolina. I just like having the points here because I think this will be a tight game. They they're built to beat each other, like. So North Carolina loves has some big guys that can and they can shoot and they've got some quick guards and and Baylor's got great guards and just thin on the big guy area. So they're they're just kind of built to be the opposite of each other. So I think it'll be very tight, so especially with North Carolina hitting the threes the way they have in the last few games. If they go cold, Baylor blows them out. But I, I think if they just get a few, get Brady and Caleb Love going, then that makes Baycott so dangerous. And, so I just like having the points here because I think this one's going to be very close. So, Professor, we rarely do this on the college basketball podcast, but we're going head to head on this one. Um, North Carolina, like you mentioned, playing really well. Baylor playing really well. Uh, also, the model has consistently missed on Baylor unders this year, at least for, from from what I recall. It feels like it anyway. Um, so I'm going to actually play the over 149 here. And especially if this ends up being a close game, fouls at the end could, you know, we could get 20 points in the last three minutes or something like that. So uh, I know the model says play the under here, but I feel much better taking the over 149. Hey, I don't think it's crazy. Like I said, there's a reason that the play is downgraded to a C. That's based on the fact that both of these teams have been a little inconsistent with regards to totals. And so, yeah, I don't think it's a crazy way to look at, especially fouls at the end of the game if it is close. Um, it's definitely got a shot, so not the not the craziest idea there. Uh, right after that one, we'll have Creighton versus Kansas, 140 Central Time. The model makes Kansas a 12-point favorite and thinks the total should be 138. The total is 137 and a half, so no edge there, but likes a B pick on Kansas minus 10. I had to do a double take when I made this number. The number being so high really surprised me. Um, But I mean, kind of see what I just said. Kansas came out rocking against Texas Southern. They were up like 30 at the half. And again, that's not to say, 
again, what I want you to hear is it, we talk about the same thing in college football, right? If you play weaker teams and you barely beat them or you only kind of beat them, that's very different from when you play weaker teams and you just blow the doors off of them. And Kansas did that, and that means a little bit of something, whereas Creighton needed that miraculous comeback to beat a team with half the offense that Kansas has. And that's the difference is they're going up playing you know, from San Diego State, and obviously San Diego State has a fantastic defense, but uh, San Diego State – offense got hot in the first half and then completely disappeared. I don't think Kansas offense disappears. If Creighton doesn't show up for the full 40 minutes, I think Kansas can go on a run here and at, at some point in the game and just run away with it. So I'm laying the 10 points with Kansas as a B pick. Jake, what do you got? Half, half of Kansas offense is, you know, that's being gracious to say. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, but uh, Kansas, like, is so good. Very, very good offense. And we've talked about them tons throughout the year. They're just incredible. Uh, Baji and Brown are just, in, just great, great players. Um, Kalkbrenner going down and with him unlikely to play, that that's a blow. There's not really a replacement for that. He's a big guy, which can take adva- could take advantage of the weaker big guys Kansas has, and he could step out, so that opens up the lane. Um, man, it's a – Ooh, that's a big blow, and I think that's the big reason Kansas probably wins this by 15 to 20. So, sorry, I hate to keep taking this back to college football, but how many college basketball teams could we say are the exact emulation of their college football team? Uh, because San Diego State is, like, literally exactly like their football yeah. team. It's yeah, really true. crazy. It's really crazy. Anyway, uh, nobody cares about that. Um, so, Wrong audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Professor, I, I actually agree with with some of what you said right there. I was shocked when I saw that this was uh, uh, tw- the model made this twelve points because yeah. I was thinking when I saw double digits, Creighton getting ten points. I figured for sure that was the way that I was going to be leaning. Leaning, and I took into consideration what the model said, and I said, "Now nah, I can get it. I'm taking the ten points with Creighton here." <laughs> um, to me, and, and y'all watch a lot more basketball than I do, but to me, this Creighton team feels kind of like. TCU and TCU and Kansas played 15 times in the last month of the season. I don't know if y'all remember that. And TCU, you know, outside of maybe that last game gave gave Kansas a lot of fits. Um, so I'm going to take the 10 points here and uh, to steal a line from the professor. I feel like there's a lot of ways that Creighton loses this game by, you know, may lose it, but by less than, uh, you know, 10. So I'm taking the 10 points with Creighton. Yeah, I agree with you. When I, you know, I did, I made the numbers before I saw the spread, but if you'd have just told me last night, Creighton's getting 10 points. I would have said, you got to take the 10 points. Creighton's yeah. playing really well. So I was very surprised the model said that. But um, it, it, I think the interesting question here is that both of these teams have been a little up and down and, and which one comes out, right? If if, yep. if Creighton being a little shorthanded comes out and doesn't play the full 40, they're going to be really in trouble. But they've played well lately. So, I mean, you can't take that away from them. And if they keep yep. that up, uh, it, you know, laying the 10 is going to be a little bit scary at best. Yep. Yeah, they've had a really good job of next man up mentality, yeah, right? They, they have. They lose. I forget who they lost at the beginning of the year, stepped up and won the next few games and really took care of business. When Nimhard went down, they really stepped up. Um, and maybe, maybe and they stepped up right after Call Printer went down. Yeah. Um, and this one's uh, just. At some point, you feel like it has to end, but I mean, it hasn't so far. So yeah, props to Creighton. I don't know if they can keep that yeah. magic alive or not. Yeah, if, if, if Creighton loses this game, I think it's going to either be like by five or like 18. Uh, you yeah. know, I don't think it's going to land around 10. Yeah, I, I would. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, 415 Central, Michigan versus Tennessee. Tennessee is a six point favorite with a total of 136 and a half. My model makes it Tennessee minus six. So I have zero edge on the side for this one, but the model thinks 134 and a half. So I've got a B pick on 136 and a half. I'm going to assume that was Tennessee's once a month good offensive performance. They do tend to come out and just get on fire. Uh, I'm going to assume they'll go back to scoring in the upper 60s like they normally do against a real team. Obviously, we know Tennessee's defense is fantastic. And so I think that helps us out here as well. I'm going to stick with good defenses, teams that play at the same pace, which helps us because we don't have to play the guessing game about is someone going to try to slow someone down? Is someone going to try to speed someone up? How is that going to impact the game? These teams are are pretty straightforward. Neither one of them slows it down quite to the level of some of those Mountain West teams, but neither one of them is going to really get up and down the court and try to put up 90 uh, and like I said, I'm just going to trust the defenses. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think 136 and a half is too many points. I'm taking the under. Uh, Jake, this is our daily segment. Jake, tell us how you're a homer today. <laughs> um, 
this is the matchup I wanted as a Tennessee fan. I did not want to see Colorado State um, just because of how well Colorado State shoots. And I think that's the difference, right? Uh, Tennessee's got some big – not anybody near the level of Hunter Dickinson, but they have enough to get in his way where Colorado State, he could just turn and shoot over whoever he wanted to. Um, but I think the three-point shooting is the biggest difference. And, like, Michigan uh, – Especially if their point guard doesn't come back because they've got maybe one, one other one on the roster. And know. it sounds like he's very questionable as of the yeah. recording of this pod that there he might come back, but he still might not. We don't we don't seem to have any yeah. idea. Yeah, and I, I think that's a huge advantage for Tennessee because their guards are where like where their defense really starts from, uh, and then they've played against. They've also had experience playing against really good big guys. They really took out uh, Shigway the last time they played Kentucky. Uh, the Williams kid from Arkansas and uh, B- Bidiaco in Alabama, they've, they've played against guys like that. So it's not a foreign concept for them to go against um, really good big guys and at least slow them down just enough for that. And especially if uh, Tizzy's threes go in like they were, if, if Scobie shoots like he did and we get a few out of Chandler and if, Lord, what was that out of Fulkerson? I don't think I've seen that since his sophomore year. Um, yeah, but if they get anything near like that, I think they blow Michigan out of the water. But I, I lean Tennessee, and I think this will be under 10 because I don't think Tennessee shoots like that again. All right, Cousin Jared. So I don't have a lot of faith in Rick Barnes' teams in March. But fair, I do, very but, fair. But I do have faith in their offense disappearing for a uh, Rick Barnes coached team offense disappearing for at least a little while every game. So I'm with you, Professor. I like the under 136 and a half here. I think the odds of both of these teams putting together 40 minutes of good offensive basketball is is probably pretty low. Um, so the under feels safe here. Again, you know, close game free throws could really mess you up in, in this type of game. But but again. I, I have fairly good confidence that somebody's going to disappear offensively for a while in this one. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Richmond versus Providence, 510 Central Time. I was shocked on this one. I tweeted that. I just assumed that my numbers were going to like Richmond. They've been liking Richmond for the most part. I backed Richmond uh, against Iowa, taking those 10.5 points, and I've been fading Providence for the most part. So I just assumed my numbers would like Richmond – but lo and behold, they don't. The spread is Providence minus three. The model thinks Providence minus three. And so that was a little bit surprising to me. Instead, I've got a total play for you here. The model thinks this should be 136 and a half. So the B pick on over 133 and a half. That three point delta is a pretty sizable one. Providence, this is why I said I wanted to pass on this from that earlier segment. Providence frustrated South Dakota State offensively. Absolutely. I, I don't want to take that away from them. Providence came out with a good game plan. And props to them for winning, but both teams just missed a ton of shots. And and I'm saying both teams. I'm not trying to make this apologetic. You know, South Dakota State should have won. Blah blah blah. I'm saying both teams did. I think either one of those teams could have had 20 more points, and it wouldn't have surprised me. Both could have had 20 more points. I mean, the pace was relatively fast. Mm-hmm. It's just that balls weren't going in. And so I look at Richmond and South Dakota State, and they're pretty similar. Richmond maybe not quite as fast, uh, maybe not quite as good offensively, a little bit better defensively, but they're not that different of teams. I think we basically get the same sort of game, but I have to imagine more shots falling in. It's hard to see fewer going in. If nothing else, it'll be harder on our eyes to see fewer going in. So I'm going to go over 133 and a half and just assume – that whatever weird, you know, glue was on that rim to get balls to bounce funny or something is not on Saturday evening, and we can get over 133 and a half. Yeah, I, I like Providence in this scenario. Like, really, that Al Durham shot where he didn't look at the goal and just threw it off of the glass is kind of the sum of Providence's season, like, right? You just hey, <laughs> it works. Like, I, I don't know, um, but really, the, I'm the, I think Providence is got a great defense going here. I think Cooley is really on top of his game. Uh, and R- Richmond is – I think they benefited from Iowa missing threes and more so than uh, actually beat Iowa uh, because, like, what, Bohannon had six and didn't score until the last, uh, what, four minutes of the game. So I, I think they benefited a lot more from Iowa missing some open shots that – uh, they typically don't. Then they actually forced Iowa into a low-scoring game. So I think 
I think Providence gets this done by round 10. All right, it's Jared. Yeah, Professor. So we were thinking the exact same thing. I, I thought that, you know, that South Dakota State team was very similar to Richmond. I expected the line to be similar. So I was expecting maybe two. I was surprised that I was getting three with, with Richmond. And I know we've we've loved to say, you know, how lucky Providence been, has been this season. But for me, this is more a play about I think Richmond is one of those teams that just got hot at the right time, run through the conference tournament, and I can easily see them making the Sweet 16. So I'm taking the three points with, with Richmond here. Um, you know, like you said, model says this is spot on, but to me, this is a team that's hot at the right time. Don't overthink it. Just kind of ride the hot hand. Yeah, I heard some comparisons yesterday to Richmond looking a little bit like um, Oregon State potentially last year. That same sort of thing. Decent team, not great, gets hot, wins the conference tournament and all of a sudden gets it together. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. But I heard some comparisons to that uh, that, you know, some, you know, similar seat as well. So I, yeah. I see why people are, are saying that. Yeah. St. Mary's UCLA 610 Central. UCLA is a two and a half point favorite. The model thinks UCLA, UCLA should be a three point favorite with a total of 125. So I'm going under 127 as a B pick. Look, I said anything was on the table for UCLA, and they took that just about <laughs> to the extreme. I my my family's up in town watching the tournament. They do that every year, and I was telling my dad last night that before that game, I said. Literally anything could happen with this UCLA team. And I kept hanging in there and hanging in there. And like we talked about, you know, good UCLA is good, bad UCLA is bad. Uh, I mean, so to me, I don't really know what to make of the side because I don't know what UCLA is going to show up. But I do like this under. It's a low number. But UCLA is really good at defense. They play slow. St. Mary's actually rates better in terms of Ken Palm defensive efficiency and plays slower. I see this being a lot like the Akron game. I see it being tight, low scoring, maybe a little bit boring. Thankfully, it's at 610 and not at 910 because I might put you to sleep there if it's a late one. St. Mary's does play a tiny bit faster than Akron, but I don't think it's a meaningful difference, especially given that St. Mary's has a better defense than Akron. So I'll go under 127 on this one. Jake, uh, UCLA, which which one's showing up to, uh, tomorrow? Uh, I think it's in between, man. I, I I don't I don't I'm not comfortable with this. I wanted like St. Mary's like uh, four, like right around there. So I, I'm, I just lean a little. I think free throws towards the end. Then UCLA wins this game based on some free throws, and I think we get like a three point game kind of right in there. Um, just because the way St. Mary's shot yesterday, if they repeat that, they might blow UCLA out of the water too. Um, but UCLA. I think it's hard to match that experience that they had last year of no, like when the game gets tough, like they never panicked. They were down what, uh, it was good. It was I think good. Seven, seven or eight. Yeah. And, and they, and there was no panic whatsoever. And, uh, and they just calmly went about it, chip, chopped the tree down and took the lead at the end and then did what they did on the defensive end and made it impossible for Akron. So, I think, I think you're going to see something kind of similar right there, and I think it'll end up being a real low-scoring game, real tight game. Good. So we've got a special here, folks. We've got our first tournament double-double. Okay, oh. so I am taking the two and a half points with St. Mary's, and I am also taking that under 127. I think um, everything that was just said is, is pretty good analysis of things. Low scoring, obviously, for the reasons that we already discussed. I think those two and a half points could be really valuable in a low um, low scoring game like that. The other thing I would say is that, you know, at the end of games, I just don't trust UCLA. Uh, and, you know, I know when they're good, they're good. But, man, those those bad moments just really stick in your head for, for a while. So and that may be more just me as a human, you know, maybe I need to think of it more like the model does and just kind of be more balanced. But man, I just don't trust UCLA at the end of some of these games, especially after they had that big lead against Arizona, in the Pac-12 uh, championship game and just kind of threw that down the toilet pretty quickly. So uh, a special double double there, folks. So let's let's get both legs of that one home. Alrighty, alrighty. And then at 645 Central, St. Peter's versus Murray State. Murray State's an eight-point favorite with a total of 130. The model thinks it should be Murray State minus nine and a half with a total of 128. So under maybe not a bad look there, but my official pick is going to be a B play on Murray State minus eight. I had both of these schools last round, which always makes it tough when you like both teams and they do exactly what you think and they play each other. You know, how do you handle that? I think St. Peter's played a great game. I outlined 
in that podcast why they weren't getting any respect. St. Peter's almost was an A play. It was just, you know, basically one percentage point short of being an A play. They didn't get any respect against Kentucky, and that made no sense. That line was way too high. Not that they should have won, but I'm not surprised they hung in there and didn't lose by 20. Now they are getting respect. I think they're actually getting a little bit too much respect. I think people are overreacting to that game. Uh, Murray still isn't getting any respect. I think people are looking at the fact that they needed overtime to beat San Francisco and, and kind of penalizing them. But San Francisco was good. And I think beating San Francisco is not just randomly beating some 10 seed. You know, USC Miami is playing today, depending on when you listen to this, that game may have already happened. You know, the winner of that one to me just kind of randomly beat a seven or a 10. But San Francisco has some upside and can have some matchup issue with the team. That's a, that's a good win for Murray. I think Murray isn't getting the respect they deserve. I think St. Peter's is. And so I think this number has shrunk a little bit too much. So I'm going to lay the eight points, and I'm going to assume that Murray will not take St. Peter's lightly like Kentucky did and pulls away late. Jake, what do you got? Yeah, I want, once again, like I, think I even said on that podcast, I wanted to take St. Peter's. I wanted to, but I thought it was just a bad – draw for him that turned out should have been on him um and i think like this is part of that bad draw like uh, this murray state team's good um i'm hoping uh the guy the car something that rolled his ankle i'm hoping he's not out because that that kind of changes things that he didn't it didn't look too good but i mean with a rolled ankle a day day and a half you can really kind of step back from that um so i think murray state's got all the talent to to win this and win this by double digits um, they play a very good defense. Uh, they are very talented offensively. They've got a couple guards that are quick as lightning. The Arkansas transfer, Justice Hill, that dude is quick, quick, quick. I don't, I, I hadn't watched Murray State much this year, but watching that one yesterday, whew, I didn't realize how quick that guy was. And I just, I, I mean, I don't know why uh, Cal – really struggled to figure out that little two three matchup zone that it seemed that St. Peter's was doing. But I don't I think now that the tape's out on that, I, I don't think that like, same little trick opens and I, I don't know how many tricks like that Shane Holloway has. Um and you know he'll need something to make it a little different, make it tough on Murray. I think Murray gets it done. All right, cousin Jared. Listeners, commenters take take notice. I, I don't know how many times this has happened this season, but we're all three on the same play here. I as well am laying the eight points with Murray State. And Professor, I think it really goes to your second point there. I don't know what it's going to take for Murray State to get some more respect for what they've done this season. I mean, they've won 30 games. I mean, how many teams in the tournament can say, still in the tournament, can say that they've won 30 games? They've been playing well all season. And again, I just think that they just haven't gotten the respect that they, they deserve. I, I still cannot believe that it, that game was a pick em, uh, against San Francisco um, last night. So I, I'm laying the eight points with Murray State here, and I'm sure this sets us up to all be completely wrong. Well, and, and to answer your question, you know, they win by six against St. Peter's. They win by 10. They win by 15. And I still don't think they'll get any respect. I don't think that'll yep. do it. I think they're yep. going to they're gonna have to go beat a blue blood before people actually realize that this Murray State team is really good. Yep. Uh, hopefully we can keep riding them until it happens and just yep. uh, count, our, count our wins, uh, <laughs> you know, yep. while, yep. while, while everyone else struggles to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico State versus Arkansas, 740 Central Time. Arkansas is a six and a half point favorite with a total of 139. The model thinks... The total should be 138 and a half, so pretty close on the total, but the Arkansas should be a seven and a half point favorite. So I'm going to give you a B pick on Arkansas minus six and a half. And before you think, here we go again, Professor fades New Mexico State. I do fade New Mexico State a lot. Record is sub 500. It's not awful, but it isn't good either. But some plays are good and they still lose. Some plays are bad and they lose, right? That Tennessee Longwood game, that Longwood pick was dead in the water uh, by about the, you know, under eight timeout in the first half, right? They hung in there pretty good. And then Tennessee just, I don't know, went on like a 20-0 type run. And that was just dead in the water. And that happens. And you got you to take your losses, right? But look, I'm standing by that UConn play. New Mexico State, I believe, shot 11 from 17 from three. If they shoot their season average from three and you subtract those points off UConn wins, I think it was by like eight or so. So not only does UConn win, but they cover the number. Obviously, life's not that simple, but I think it just illustrates how lucky New Mexico State was. And I don't expect that they'll shoot 60-whatever percent from three again. 
I think Vermont is really good, and that's a solid win by Arkansas. I don't know exactly how people are viewing that, but I mean, kudos to Arkansas. That's not just a four beating a 13. That's a four beating a very good team. I'll trust that New Mexico State and little baby Allen don't go off, and so I like backing Arkansas here. I think they are just a lot more talented than New Mexico State. I think the matchup's bad for New Mexico State because of the fact that both these teams play such good defense. I don't think New Mexico State is going to have some of the advantages they might have had against UConn. I think Arkansas kind of runs away late and can win by more than seven. Jake, what do you got? Yeah, I'm the same way. I think our, this matchup is a lot harder for New Mexico State. Like, you're right. I don't think they hit those threes like they did. Um, <clears throat> and then J.D. Navis, uh, uh, J.D. Note, Davis, and Emoti are all bigger than UConn's guards, like stronger, thicker, and I think taller for the most part. And I think that's going to make it a lot harder on Allen because where he can't just back guys down and hit a turnaround fade. It's going to be um, – I mean, as great of, great of a player as he is and as – Heck of a performance. Oh, man, what a game. Yeah. That, was, that was fun to watch him just work. I, I don't think he gets the same thing. Uh, Muss is a great coach. He's kind of been here. A lot, of, a lot of this team was there last year. And, I mean, we're just a few minutes from a Final Four berth. They, they, they really had a good shot last year. And I, I, think, uh, I think they're going to run through this New Mexico State team. All right, Cousin Jared. I, I don't know how many times this has happened on the College Basketball Podcast, but <laughs> – <laughs> y'all, y'all both changed my mind here. I oh. have something written down, and, and y'all have changed my mind. So, the model has not done well fading New Mexico State. I, I'm honestly, I'm getting tired of it at this point. I'm tired of losing when fading New Mexico State. But the professor reminded me before we started recording that this New Mexico State team lost to Chicago State just a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, and any team that can lose to Chicago State should not be only getting six and a half points against Arkansas. So I had written down that I was going to stay away from this game, but y'all taught me into it. I am going to lay the points with Arkansas here. If they play the way that they can, they're going to, I, I think this is going to be a double digit game. It's just my heart getting in the way of my head when I originally said no to this. So throw the heart out. It's not, right. important. it's not important anyway. And <laughs> and let's just let's lay the six and a half points with Arkansas. And this I'm gonna blame this on y'all. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm blaming it on y'all. <laughs> Fair enough. Which takes us to the last game of Saturday night, Memphis and Gonzaga, eight forty five central. Gonzaga's a ten and a half point favorite, and the model says ten and a half as well. So the models pegged this one pretty close to what the reality is. Uh, the model thinks 153 and a half is what the total should be. So I've got a B pick on under a hundred and 55. I want no part of the side in this game. Personally, Gonzaga showed what they can do in that one stretch. Fading Gonzaga is always scary, but I mentioned this at the top. Georgia State was in that game. They had a big guy roll an ankle. Obviously, hope he's okay. It looked rough. Then they had another big guy out foul out right after that. And then they had another foul out later, I think. And that is just when the wheels fell apart. And so I don't know if that means anything or not about Gonzaga. It makes me a little bit nervous because Memphis is a lot better than Georgia State. Memphis also has the athletic guys uh, to hang in there with Gonzaga, which not many teams can say. Memphis has been on fire. You take that one Houston game out uh, and the conference championship, and they've just been rolling. So I don't really want to do anything on the side here just because I don't like fading Gonzaga, but my goodness, I, I, I don't want to fade Memphis at this point. Um, so I'm going to look at that total. I'm going to trust the numbers inflated. I am going to say that Gonzaga can't hang 90 on Memphis. And as long as Gonzaga doesn't hang 90, we got a shot here to get under that 155. Jake, what you got? <sighs> I don't like this game at all. I don't like any anything around it. Um, I lean just, just barely to Gonzaga because I think uh, Duran is prone to foul trouble. And if he goes out, then I, I think Gonzaga can flip the switch again. Uh, there's not really a replacement there for Memphis for for him. Um, we did have an Emoti bait sighting, which was nice to see. He hit the three. Looked pretty nothing. good. Yeah, he looked good and hit, hit a nice shot. And then I think he was promptly sat down and didn't sniff the floor. But I mean, if he gets if he gets added in, I know Penny said he was on a minutes restriction with the back. If he gets added in, uh, and they, I mean, that that the talent that they have the talent to not only cover this but beat Gonzaga. Like they they've got that. 
And Gonzaga struggled with real athletic teams this year. If you look at the Duke loss and the Houston loss, and I think there was a close one with somebody else. I can't remember off the top of my head. But so they, uh, I don't like this game. Um, but so I'm leaning Gonzaga just barely because I think Durant gets in foul trouble and Timmy and Holmgren take advantage of that. But, uh. Cousin Jared? So I wasn't going to let anybody change my mind on this one. And that's good because neither of y'all would have been very convincing. (laughs) Uh, But I am staying away from this game. Uh, I feel like we had a Twitter exchange on January 20th. Y'all mentioned on the podcast, was Penny Hardaway going to make it through the season? And quite the turnaround for Memphis since then. They've looked a lot better. Uh, They're definitely pretty hot right now. But at the same time, Gonzaga is Gonzaga. You never know, you know, winning by 20 points could happen, you know, just, just like that. So to me, this is a stay away. There's if if both teams play like they should, this should be an, an exciting game and, and maybe a close game. So uh, hopefully, just this is a great game to to end the night. But I just can't find any value here. Yeah, Memphis since that uh, incident with Penny uh, started off, and they weren't covering right after that, but they were winning. They just weren't winning by as much. I mean, they started to win, but not by as much as we thought they should. And then they started covering. And so they've really just gotten better and better and better since then. So, yeah, I, I just would not want to fade Memphis at this point yeah. at a principle yeah. with how good they've looked. Um, but, yeah, like you said, Gonzaga, I think, went on a 21-0 run. And, and yesterday, and I don't think they can do that against Memphis necessarily, but they only have to do half of that to cover this number. If it's a tight yeah, exactly. game, they go on a 10-0, 11-0 run, and boom, all of a sudden now the, the spread is in jeopardy. So, yep. uh, yeah, it should be a fascinating game. I, I'm kind of, I think Jake was indicating this a little bit. He didn't say it as much. But if this was like that St. Well, Mary's line, when Gonzaga played them in the conference tournament, it's up in that 13 and a half range. I'm like, oh, I'll just take Memphis. Like, even if they foul late, like they should cover 13, right? Um, but just at 10 and a half, it's like, ah, it's t- it's tougher to take Memphis. You like, you want those extra couple of points there. Yeah. Um, really, really tough line on this one. So, like I said, I'm going with the under. I just uh, think that's too high, but um, it's not my favorite play on the board, if that indicates yeah. anything. And I think, cousin Jared, I think you talked, you kind of picked up on that, right? That I wasn't extremely yeah. convinced. Not my favorite play on yeah. the board, but I think, I think under the side to look, it's the smart side. But uh, hopefully, Memphis plays defense and slows the pace down a little bit and can keep us into a lower scoring and fun matchup. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Picks with the Professor. Reminder: check that Google Sheet for predictions on every NCAA tournament game. If you haven't answered yet, click that subscribe button. To ensure all the college basketball content is dropped right into your feed, we will see you tomorrow. And until then, remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.